All right, we, we're gonna go through the next two sections real quick. Because again, it's just a recap and the the actual meet, or the actual, you know, the computation is uh, at the end of this class and next class. So we will just go over quickly how someone could solve a linear equation and a system of equations. Let's start from defining what a linear equation is in the first place. A linear equation is a function of the form, oh sorry, a linear function, a linear function, a linear function. Like in this we have equation and a function. But first we have to start from a function. A linear function is of the form f of x equals to ax plus b. That's a simple form. There's only one variable x. Oh, and yeah, I forgot to say that a and b are any real numbers. You can change the value of the values of a and b however you want. Some examples are x minus 2. In this case, a is 1 and b is minus 2. <coughs> There's nothing in front of x, but if it's nothing, then a still has to, has to be a number. It can't be 0, so a is 1. Plus 1 times x is x. The value of x doesn't change. It is 1. For the second one, it's 3x plus 1. Yeah, it is clear that a is 3 and b is 1. And then for the next one, 2 thirds x minus 4 fifths. A is 2 thirds and b is minus 4 fifths. Two things here is that first, um, the number can be any real number. In this case, we only use um, a fraction, a rational number, but it can be pi, like pi x plus pi square, or any fancy real numbers. And lastly, and lastly, we have a special case when it's just, just a number. Sometimes, sometimes you see yeah, a, a linear function has an S1 variable, variable but sometimes, sometimes it doesn't have any variable, variable at all. In this, in this case, it's still in, in, in this form. form. It's just it, happen, it just happens that A is 0. If you let A be 0, 0 times X is 0, so it's gone from the sum. You are left with just a number B. <coughs> so those are linear functions. And as, and as a, a spider, spider for the DVD, or, the, or like more like a uh, preview for the next two classes, classes. The, 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 the reason we call it linear, because, linear, because if you plot it in the graph, let's say you plot the function y equals to x minus 2, y equals to x minus 2, in this graph, and you're going to get a line. It's a line. A straight line. And that's why we call it a linear function. It's a function that produces a line on a graph. <coughs> but that's a function for you. And then you have to solve an equation from the function. We have a function. The function can be anything. Yeah, but, yeah, then but then we have an equation, equation. I wish. In this, in this case, case, for the linear function, it is on the form. The, the, the simplest, simplest form is fx equal to z. It, 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 it can be any simpler. Maybe, maybe it's, if, if say, it's zero, zero, it could be simpler. <coughs> but, but sometimes you are asking, you, you want, want to find a point, but you want to find an input x that produces the output of z. And that's what this function is. For instance, for instance, you might you, this, this function, function might represent maybe, maybe the, the income, income the, the, the tax, income, income tax. tax. You want to you want to have to pay a tax, and then, and then you, you ask okay, if if you want, if you want this, this tax, tax and the amount of tax to be I don't know one thousand baht, then, then how, how much income you have get to get to pay, to pay that, that amount of tax. tax. So, so given the, the, the output, output you can go back and find the input. Because, like because the, the, the forward part is easy. Right? If, if I give you a, a value, let's say if I give you give you if it give you a value C, you can just, can just compute, compute it. it. Yeah, that's simple. But the, but the slightly, slightly more difficult part is if you instead 
given the output, can you find what's the input? What the input is? So <coughs> what it means for what it means by solving a linear equation. Given the value, we can find the function. Right, and then to achieve the result, right, because we want to work, we want to know what x is, then at the end of the day, you want to write right, x equals to something. You should almost always when you solve something, you you solve an, any kind of equation. You want to write x equals to some value. And for at this point, right, all we have is just um, multiplication and an addition. There are only two operations that we use. And we can reverse that operation right, easily by using the what do you call the algebraic manipulation. So in this case, uh, if you start from this equation, f of x equals to c, right, we can immediately um, express that as an equation ax plus b equals to c. So in a sense, you replace f of x on the left-hand side by what it is defined. It is defined as x plus b in this case. And yeah, you can see a spoiler here. And you can move b to the right to get a of x minus c minus a of x equals to c minus b. And you divide both sides by a, you get x equals to 1 over a times c minus b. Some, some of you might be, may or may not be <coughs> familiar with that, but um, maybe let me add another step here. This is what you do if you know already what is what is going on here. Right, but sometimes you may get, like, you know, some, some fancy function. A like side of x square equals to 10, for instance. Oh, that's not possible. Side of x square equals to a half. Let's see. Something like that. Uh, even though you have a pretty complex equation, uh, you have a function you don't know, you have some nested value, there are so many things going on. Uh, you, 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 still, uh, you still follow this step, one at a time. You can kind of like unpack. Uh, if you think of this as a uh, 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 tangle chord, uh, you have, you have a uh, Headphones, right? Or earphones, or earphones a bit along long cord, long, long string, and if you put it into your pocket, pocket and you take it out, it is almost always tangled. tangled. <coughs> it's gonna take you 10 minutes to untangle that to make it, make it a strand line once more. more. It's, it's the same, same here, here. Like this left hand side is tangled, tangled. but you can do, you can do it, you can try to untangle it one at a time. As long as the function is uh, simple enough. So for instance, what what do we do here? What we do, here? Like what, what we do when you move? Like the operation of moving something to the right hand side? It's actually not. It is what you think systematically or physically like moving this number from one side to the other. Yeah, but, but that's not how, how, how math works, work, right? You, you, you can't just move things around at random. Yeah, because otherwise, why don't you just... Why, can why can't you just, you just move x out? For instance. Okay, so, moving is what you do, but what is behind the curtain? And what is behind... What is between these two lines? Not moving. What lies between these two lines that you have? Ax plus v, we have c. And what, and what you are performing is actually, you perform, you perform the same operations, operations on both sides. And this is part of the missing step that we can assume to be trivial. And you can move things around. around. What you can do is you can perform, you can apply the same operations to both sides. <coughs> In this case, you can subtract both sides by B. <coughs> and it happens that when you Add something and then you subtract, subtract the same, subtract, subtract that by the same value, value it cancels, cancels out. <coughs> and so, so that's why we get the next line where B disappears from the left hand side and appears on the right hand side. Okay, okay, we, we didn't move that, we simply apply them and cancel things out. 
It would be um, important when you infer functions such, such as psi or exponential or logarithm, which we will encounter eventually in this course. <coughs> For now, let me add that. And if you if you see um, a number, you can apply the same operation. You can subtract, you can remove those numbers from both sides. And similarly, here. We, we can just, you know, just move A to the right hand side. Right? Because you, you, in, in that case, you would have to like kind of explain why can't you just subtract that, right? If you think of them as moving things around. And because again, you, you, you would have to remember a rule like, oh, if A is multiplied, then you move A to the denominator, to the bottom of the fraction. And again, let's just explain that visually. <laughs> it's all what we do here. Okay, what, what we actually accomplish, or what is missing between these two lines, is that we divide A on both sides. <coughs> and again, we apply the same operations on both sides. And it just happens that when you have, when you multiply a number, when you multiply something, something by a number and then divide by the same number, number and you get back to the original number, which is x. <coughs> so that's how the the value of a um is is disappearing from the left hand side. Oh, yeah, and, and let me write this way. <coughs> so what do we do is actually you multiply that by the in one over a. On both, on both sides. sides. So that is the, the missing line. line. And, and eventually, it is all you get C minus B times 1 over A. And I will try to repeat this kind of you know, um, reasoning or steps for other functions as well. Because those are where you need them. <coughs> For so instance, yeah, if, if you are given this equation, you can, can just write them out and think, and think that, that oh, the goal, goal is that, that's, that's the goal. goal. We have the starting point, that's the goal. And since we and see, see the goal, goal oh, to get that, that into, into just a single point. number, then, then you have to get rid of that number four, four and that number two, two. somehow. And you get rid of number 4 by subtract both sides by 4. So that this cancel out to get 2x minus 2. And then in the next step, you again, you need to get rid of that number 2. Which you can do by multiplying both sides by a half. And then again, this 2 cancel out. Oh, this also happens to cancel out to x1. <laughs> But as I'm um, solving a linear equation, 2x plus 4 equals to 6. And for b, we have minus 3x minus 5 equals to 4. And then again, uh, you can start from here and try to <coughs> move all the way there, move all the way to the goal, which is x equals to something. Sometimes you are, you know, you are, let's say, instruct or you are suggested that you should move things around. But, but it depends. In this case, you don't have to move things around. Uh, as before, you we need to get rid of minus 5 and minus 3, somehow. But you ask, how do you get rid of minus 5? You just add 5 on both sides. So that these two, uh, these two cancel out. Right. Or, or if, if you, you want, want to be, you know, to be formal, formal if you want to follow the step, step um, exactly, then, then you have to minus minus, minus, five, minus five, minus minus five, minus five. <coughs> which you, you must you know, you know that already. Is this plus just a plus, 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 plus five? five. <coughs> but it is pretend in a kind of a fancy way. way. But anyway, anyway, if once, once you get rid of that, the left hand side becomes minus 3x. The right, the right hand side is for minus minus 5, five which is 4 plus 5. And we know that is 9. 
So okay, so that is done. And next, maybe we're gonna have to get rid of that number. Right, and to get rid of that number, we can multiply by 1 over that number. I noticed that I put minus 3 in the denominator for now. So that's how you get rid of those two pairs. And on the left hand side, you are left with just a single x. And these two values cancel out. But on the right hand side, that's maybe difficult to see for a moment, but if you do it one step at a time, now you would get 9 over minus 3. And then there are some, you know, some algebraic manipulation that you. It's not, it's not in this class, class. Yeah, yeah, but, but <clears throat> uh, you, you might know that, okay, if you have a minus anywhere on the bottom, on the bottom you can take it out first. first. That's, that's a single minus sign. sign. You can take it out. <laughs> and if, if, you, if you want to be formal, it would be something like, okay, if it's A over minus B, then it's A over minus 1 times B. So it's 1 over minus 1 times a over b, and that gives you minus 1 times a over b. And that actually, that, that simple step actually has uh, several intermediate steps, which we think is kind of like given, oh, you know, you just move it up. But it's not just like that, you have to split that and do other things. <laughs> uh, but if, if you knew that, and you, and you can just move it out, out. And, that and that should, should be minus 3. Okay, so, okay, so that's um, two linear equations done and solved. Solve. Two, two simple steps. Step. And that, and that requ requires you, you a little bit of knowledge about uh, how these four operations work, work. And, and how plus and minus uh, are related. related. Uh, multiply, multiplication and division are related and how you deal with negative numbers in those cases. That's the first part. Next we have uh, this is f, x, f of x equals to a number, a single number. And then we can reverse engineer and find the value of x. And sometimes we have um slightly more complicated where both sides of the equation uh, uh, functions. functions. If the first, the first question, question is, um, um, are we even allowed to write it this way? way? The, answer the answer is yes, yes of course. Sometimes, sometimes you have a question of this form, form right? In, 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 in Economics 101, 101. But you might have seen this graph that uh, describes the relationship between the... the same thing is the... Demand and the supply. We have one simple linear equation for the demand. The more the demand, the demand is, the higher price you can charge. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, that, that's your table now. Wait, is it? <coughs> uh, yeah, the more the demand is. And then we have the, the other one for the supply. It has to start to down myself. Oh yeah, if there's a, there's a quantity, and that's the price. It's some kind of this uh, some kind of that. And so you have you will have one function for a line, and another function for another line. And all, and all you need to do is to find where the is x. Like what value of x give the same value, give the same result for both of these functions. So that would be what this equation is telling us. Oh, and again, the intersection part is going to be described in two weeks from now, in when we when we talk about functions. Uh, but, but for now, now yeah, if, there are, are, if there are simply, simply linear functions, functions and we can simply write them as uh, the, the first, first function equals to the second function. function. <laughs>
So the difference here is that we have an extra terms of c times x on the right hand side. And luckily, the process of solving that is still straightforward. But we have two extra steps here. At first, we can subtract b on both sides to get minus b. Is here. But we also need to subtract c times x on both sides to get minus cx on the other side. Right, so that means for, the, for this step, actually, again, there's a sim there's a missing step here, which is minus b on both sides, and then you minus the track c times x on both sides. And these two cancel, you are left with minus cx on the left, and these two cancels, and you are left with just minus b on the right. And then there's a fact about, <coughs> about this term, is that you can reveal value. This is the, the property of numbers, you can reveal things. In this case, you can reveal x into the parentheses. To get the value of a times x minus c times x. But on the, on the other hand, this, 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 this process is called distribution. Right? But the reverse here is called a factoring. Which again, we are not going into, into much details about that. But this is what is behind. Now, the, the way this works because we can factor the, the, same, the same variable x out. So, so that's how we get, get a minus c times x equals to d minus b. And, and lastly, this becomes, becomes a single number. number. Once, once we compute, we compute that, so we can divide on both, on both sides. And get, and get this kind of result with this kind of equation. <coughs> yeah, for instance, oh, this is not in the center <laughs> anyway. Yeah, for a, we use simply start from 2x plus 4 equals to x minus 6. We still, we still have, have the same goal, goal here. At the, At the end, end, we want to express it as x equals to something. something. But, but the way we accomplish that is, if if, if we, we have, have to, you know, add, add intermediate steps, steps you would need to subtract 4 on both, on both sides, sides to get rid of that, that and, and then subtract x on both sides <coughs> to get rid of the x. And this 4 is cancelled, so you get 2x minus x. And then, and then this x, x and it's cancel, you, you add x, x and you subtract x. And so, and so you are left with minus 4, 4 minus, minus 6, 6 minus 4. 4. And then you, do, you do, the, do some math on the right, right. Nine minus 6, 6 minus 4 is simply minus 10. 10. Uh, but, uh, but then on the left we have 2x minus x. <coughs> and you can, you can, you can think, think of them as, you know, if you have, have two copies of something and you take one out, you are, you are left with just a single, a single copy. copy. If you know, you know that already. already. But, if but if you, you don't know that, that, then you can do it systematically, which is that, oh, we can take, take the x out. out. This is uh, the common factor. <coughs> you, take you take it out, out. And, then and then you write whatever what is left. If you take x out from the first term, you are left with just two. If you, if you attack left x r for the second term, you are left with just minus. minus. And again, it's, it's just one. one. <coughs> 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 right, because um, it's not, it's not empty. empty. It's, it's not that if you take x out, you, you get nothing left. <coughs> but you still get one left because that's the uh, minus one. Okay, so that's two minus one times x equals to ten. And in any case, um, luckily. No, it's just, just one times x. So, uh, so uh, you would have to divide both sides by one, one but <coughs> you don't have to because one times x is already one. one. So it's minus 10. So that's the, the answer for a. a. <coughs> like we add the orange step, step. <coughs> and we add this, uh, this property. That then when you subtract the same variable, variable and you can take it out. Just, just subtract, subtract the numbers, the numbers in front of it. So that's, so that's A. a. And next, next we have B. 
and three x plus five equals to x plus seven. And at the end of the day, we want to act to write x equals to something. Let's go back here. Let's start from here. You can see I left. I leave some spaces because I'm gonna have to do this two times. And you want to get rid of the five on the left, so we simply subtract both sides by five. And then we want to get rid of x on the right, <coughs> so we subtract x on both sides. And then for the left hand side, this five minus five cancel. You get three x minus x. On the right hand side, x. Cancel, you get 7 minus 5. Right, so the right hand side is just 2. And the left hand side, we have 3x minus x. If, if you know, <coughs> if you think about it as objects, we have 3 x's. Then you take one out, you should be left with just 2 x's. But again, if you want to do it uh, systematically, right, you would take a common factor out, which is x. Take, take x out from, from both term. Yeah, for, the for the left, left for the left term, three, three times x. If you get x out, you are left with just three. And then for, and the, for the right term, if you get x out, you are left with just minus an empty, empty, <laughs> empty number, and, and that empty number is one. one. <coughs> so we have what two x equals two. Yeah, but, yeah, but we are not done yet. Just a, Just a little bit more, more because um, we still have to get rid of that number 2. Which you can do that by multiplying one half on both sides. Now we get the, the answer. These two are just cancel. 2 times, two times a half is just 1. So this is the answer for equation B. All right, and, and yeah, yeah, that's all the that's all the, all the example we have, we have here, and, and yeah, we, yeah, we have the exercise. exercise so enjoy. enjoy.